Welcome to the Authentic Dentist Podcast. Join Dr. Allison House of House Dental in Scottsdale and Sean Zayas, founder of Zana, a company helping dentists extend their care beyond the chair as they lead dentists deeper along the journey of authenticity to reach greater fulfillment in their professional lives and to deliver remarkable patient experiences. At the core of the Authentic Dentist is a belief that the answer to the current challenges in dentistry is dentists discovering that their greatest asset and point of differentiation is their personal brand and that forming that brand out of their authentic selves is the best strategy for success in dentistry today. Hey guys, this is Sean and Dr. Allison House with the Authentic Dentist Podcast. And uh, today we're going to talk about some of the challenges because of the economy and uh, what's going on just because of inflation. Um, I think everybody is feeling it. I know you know, being a, you know, kind of dental supplier in some ways, uh, I'm feeling it. Um, one of the things that I think drives me crazy is that someone's like, oh, wow, it seems like you're raising your prices, which um, I think I did by like seven or eight percent. And yet it seems like so many of the goods, like consumer goods, like on Amazon, they're still trying to lower the prices. But yet you go to the coffee shop and just the other day I spent seven fifty on a cup of coffee. Not 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 three dollars, not four seven fifty, and I'm just like, man, like it, this does not seem sustainable. I mean, it can't possibly be sustainable, and yet this has happened to us. And I think clients, patients, they know, but they don't. They don't want us to raise their prices. I mean, I all the time get, this is too expensive. I mean, I would agree, but the. Inflation was, what, 9% last year? It was something insane. So everything is more expensive. I had to give my entire team raises. Um, there was going to be a strike with UPS, so I've noticed that all of my shipping has gone up. I mean, it's kind of unsustainable to just leave your fees in the same place. Now, I feel like these forces were coming against dentistry prior to everything that's been happening with inflation, though. Like hygienists just post COVID were wanting more money. So you have employ employees wanting more money even prior to this. And then now they're not just like wanting more money. They're needing more money because their cost of living is increasing because of inflation. And at the same exact time, what's happening with reimbursements? Yeah, it's, it's a mess. I mean, we all want to make more money. That's always been true. And But at this point, just to maintain the standard of living you had before, you have to, you have to make more money. It's just the way it is. But yeah, that's the problem in medicine and in dentistry is that insurance actually lowered fees in 2021, 2022. They lowered them. So we had this huge inflation and then they lowered fees. So what do you do? You run. I mean, you just try and produce twice as much as you used to produce in order to keep up with the bills. And I think, I think it's killing dentists. Now, I think it's been a while since dentists have been wanting to try to escape the PPO or, or get off of that and have more independence. Um, we complain about this. I and mean, we've been complaining since I can remember, since I started practicing. We complain about insurance. But at this point, it's, it really is becoming a huge issue. So now it's not as much of an option. It's more of a necessity. People need to... Go fee for service? I I don't know if you have to, but like I said, it's unsustainable for, um, for example, for your hygienist to make $50 an hour when um, the insurance company is reimbursing $45 for a profi. Y- you see that, that issue? It's, it's an impossibility. And so something has to give. I, I don't, I don't know what's going to give. I mean, I hear there are doctors that are no longer doing hygiene. I mean, they no longer have a hygienist. They're doing all their hygiene. I don't know if that's a great plan, but I understand there's a shortage of hygienists and the money is unsustainable. But I, yeah, it's really hard. Well, I, you know, even with that, it's like you, it's a whole idea of I can save money, but you're not, your time is worth more. So you're not able to make what only you can make if you're doing the procedures that only you can do. So it's that catch 22 of like, you know, if I decide to save time or save money, you know, washing my car, doing my lawn. Yeah. I I can save money, but it comes at a cost. 
it's a cost that I can either now I can't spend that time with my family or now I can't spend that time uh, investing into, you know, the business that I'm doing to try to get ahead. So it's the same thing, I think, with dentists. If all of a sudden you go too far down that path of, oh, this is costing me too much money, I need to save money by replacing my hygienist. Well, I don't think that's the quickest way to grow your practice. It's like maybe short-term relief because it's like, oh, I'm saving money temporarily in the short term, but I don't think it sets you up for long-term building wealth. But what do you do when you have to make payroll (laughs) this month? And you can't continue to go in debt. I mean, yeah, because there's all these bills, rent went up, everything's gone up. The other issue we're having is lab. You know, we're putting all this pressure on labs to have to less, to pay them less for, for partials and for all the things that we need. So people are 3D printing and they're doing all the work in-house, which can be great, except, again, we're looking at more time. So the amount of time you're spending in your office working has just become exponential. That's a huge problem. Yeah, I can see. So the same thing's happening, like you said, with labs where it's like, well, I can do it myself and save money. But at what point, it just means the doctor's working more. The doctor is working way more. And it, we're not really talking about how much doctors are working, but it is, it's bad. If you own a practice, you are working all the time just to, to keep up. Now, the fear of being fee-for-service is what? The transition, how many of my patients stay with me? Like, what, what, what's a dentist going through when they're thinking, man, I probably need a transition, but I'm afraid that this can happen? Um, You're afraid you're going to lose patients, and you are. I mean, that's just the reality. You are. I I got rid of Delta Dental in 2016, and every Delta Dental patient left, every one of them. And I was devastated because these are my people. I love these people. And then now, in 2023, they are actually my largest group. I have more Delta Dental patients than any other that I'm contracted with even, because I built that relationship and that I'm out of network. They're paying me my full fee. So that's really nice. But is that realistic in an area that's not the Biltmore area? I don't know. I don't know. I think that patients are feeling the same thing where they have all these expenses. Maybe their salary hasn't gone up. So there's this, this is pinch. And I feel like dentistry isn't something that people feel as much inclined to invest in. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really tough. I always think back to uh, the stories about people in the the 70s and 80s, the dentists that went and took Wednesday afternoons to play golf or, you know, Friday they were home with their kids. And I'm like, wow, I mean, that's gone. That's not happening. I don't know any doctors or dentists that can just go play golf every Wednesday afternoon. So what do we, what, what, what is there to be done about this? Like, it sounds like to offset the margins that keep compressing, it's just, again, high-dollar dentistry, you know, high-procedure dentistry, but you can't, you can't control <laughs> how many of those procedures you get to do each month. You can. I mean, there, there are definitely offices that are taking 100 new patients a month, and they're just churning stuff out. But can you do the quality? That's the question. And bigger than that, you know, we're doctors. It's easy to miss something that... You know, patients forget, oh, I'm on a blood thinner. And then you're in there and, oh, they failed to mention that they were on a blood thinner because you haven't spent any time developing the relationship, finding things out. And this is true in medicine too, where how, how much time do you get to spend with your doctor? I mean, my doctor has, I think, 10 minutes with me. The nurse comes in, takes my blood pressure, they do the blood work. But my doctor has like 10 minutes with me and that's it. It's scary to do a procedure on somebody you spent 10 minutes talking to because you have no relationship. I just still think like it must be challenging. You need to, you need to be prudent. You need to cut costs. And then you also need to double down on investing in the right, the right area. But what is the right area? Is it, is it marketing with that company that you've been marketing with? Is it trying to do some re-engagement campaign with, you know, maybe old, old patients? Like what is going to bring that return on investment? When, when, when things are going great and profits are high, you know, you, I don't know. You don't really monitor everything as tightly. You're like, oh, if it doesn't really give me an ROI right now, it's not a big deal. But when everything's getting compressed, it's like you panic. And it's like, well, this, this little amount needs to do something for me. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I feel like there's enough anxiety 
right? And enough angst in dentistry without everything compressing. I mean, because we work in this tiny, tiny area. And so it's already very stressful. So when you add all this in, yeah, it's been really hard on, on Dennis. I mean, you seem like you're doing great, though. I do? Well, yeah. I, I'm glad that I seem that way. <laughs> I would say that it's, it's been hard. I'm, I've been working every Sunday. Probably for the last 18 months, I've gone in every Sunday and worked an eight-hour day, in addition to working five days a week, just to try and keep up. Because of the stuff that you have to now do? Um, let me give you just an example. So when I started practicing in, 20, in 2000, when I read a note that the other doctor had placed, it would say, crown number 12. That was it. Nothing else. Crown number 12. So my note is almost a page long in order, and it's not because of the board. It's because of insurance. I have to have all these things listed as to why, all this documentation. So it's, that's a lot more time to do. Um, my, all the insurance needs to be filed. It, again, it's not crown number 12 and they just pay for it. There's all this detail that has to be placed in order to get paid for it with insurance. So does um, that disappear if you go fee for service? Um, it disappears. Absolutely. I think you still have to keep good notes. I, I don't think you can just write crown number 12, but I don't think you'll have to have the level of detail. And I don't think the board is even demanding that level of detail. I, I think it's insurance companies that are demanding that. But more than that, um, I bought a steric machine, so I'm doing a lot of my own lab work, and I'm not going to deliver something that's not quality. So, yeah, sometimes I'm there Sunday, and I make something, and it looks terrible, and so I make it again. <laughs> I'm not sure it's saving me money, although I've learned a lot. I've definitely become a better dentist because I have to do all of this. And then um, you still have to invest in your team. You know, I'm, I'm still this old-fashioned girl that I, I really like the Zig Ziglar stuff on you build your team, and that's your business. So there's a lot of prepping for meetings with my team. And then there's just balancing the budget, you know, making sure I'm paying all my bills and everything's in line. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot. But it sounds like some of that would disappear if you were able to go completely fee-for-service, which I think you're in the process of doing. I am, and it's so scary. Have you contracted with a company trying to do that? Because I'm guessing you're not trying to brave it on your own. I, I tried. Um, I hired, I met with two companies and both of them told me, we don't, you don't need us because you've already dropped the big one, Delta Dental. So you have the letters, you have the vocabulary, you just need to do this. And again, I'm in the Biltmore area. My patients are fairly wealthy. If they see the value in what I do, then they'll stay because they can afford it. Now, if I was in South Phoenix, I think that would be a totally different ball game. I don't know how you, I don't know how you manage that. Right. How would you get ahead when you need it? Like there's that, what are they, they call PPO dependence? Like you, you, you're dependent on that. Well, because the patient actually can't afford, they don't have right. the $400 in their account to pay for something. So the PPO, they're, they're needed. So if that's your model, it's just higher volume? You're going to be higher volume. And again, you know, it depends on the dentist. There are some dentists that thrive in that that high pressure environment, like they do better work. Not everybody, certainly not me, but I, I do see people that thrive in that area. So I don't, I don't ever want to say that you get lower quality in a PPO environment. Cause I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true, but I think you can miss pieces of the patient, not necessarily that you're doing bad work, but you can miss pieces of that relationship. But yeah, there are ER docs out there that love it. They thrive on that fast pace, get this done, move on. And that's, it's not a bad thing. We need those people. I can just see the challenge of not just having a dentist that thrives on that, but your, your team, you know, the assistant, you know, because it sounds like that's the pace for everybody. If that's your pace, that's the pace for everybody. So you have to have a team that can handle that. You need to have a team that's ready for in and out type efficiency. You know, not everyone can work in and out. Um, they, their hiring process is crazy because it is nonstop. They, they have nonstop demand mm -hmm. um, where if you walk into a Wendy's or a Burger King or even a McDonald's at times, there's not things happening. There's lots of lulls. There's not a lull at In-N-Out. In in and out it's like you're in the kitchen and you're constantly moving around doing stuff. Um, so, so if you're a PPO practice, you have to have those level of systems. And how do you take time out in order to make sure those systems are going well? 
And I mean, that's a huge challenge because you've got to not schedule patients for an hour or two and run through systems so that your assistants and your team are able to, to work at that pace. And, and it's a tough pace. I don't, I don't know if there's an answer here. Um, I think if you have the option to get out of insurance, you probably should. If you don't, um, it's looking at how are you going to maximize those systems. Thank you for listening to the Authentic Dentist Podcast. To join Allison and Sean on this journey, hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Here's to your success. Express yourself fully. Live authentic. <laughs>